Hi guys, that's Dorota Palska International, new artist and educator here again. And today I'm um, it with Catherine and we are going to do a set of the sculpted meals. So I already started just to don't keep you bored so you don't have to watch everything. So you would sanitize the client's hands, then using a 180 degree scratch the surface of the natural meal. I have already done it, most of it. And I have left two meals. Um, the ring finger is going to have some glitter encapsulation and the other finger is just going to be um, plain sculpting. Um, so I wanted to show you two different ways of sculpting the needles and then we will do some nice and Christmassy design on them. So I'm just here. So I'm just uh, removing the dust from those needles now and I'm going to dehydrate them with the blue scrap. Uh, obviously this is a tutorial from the salon so they are going to be some noises on the background. But I will try my best. Um, that's a sculpted form so I'm just peeling the sticker of it. Put it on the back and then I need to cut the form. So I'm using my scissors. And I want to widen this form a little bit on the one side and the other side. Just so when I'm squeezing in between my finger, I can pinch it nice and I can get a better shape. So I've got my form. Then hide the client view so they don't help you. Because otherwise the application of the form becomes really difficult. Find the middle. And I like my forms going really straight. I don't want the nails which are coming down especially for a coffin shape nail and that's my first form in we can even squeeze it a little bit more and i'm going to do it on the second nail as well but to save myself a time uh, i'm going to apply already universal air uh, universal air bond and the extra nail prep so that's an extra nail prep in case i have touched the nails i want to dehydrate it again and because i need to wait for it to dry that's why i have done it in between the form application just to speed up then another nail. Okay, so cut the form. Pre-pinch it in between the fingers. And I like to close my forms a little bit just before I apply it. But you have guys seen me doing it many, many times. And there is a detailed videos of the form applications as well. Just relax it. That's it. So if the client's hands are lifted up a little bit, then the form application becomes really difficult. The hand needs to be really nicely relaxed to be able to apply the form. And I want to show you the side view as well. So my form is nice and straight because we are going to this length. So the needle is going to be straight, going up a little bit to the top. Now, I'm not going to go through the talking quite a lot because um, this is something unexpected, like the new sculpted set. And obviously it takes me much longer. Like ideally, I would like to book a longer appointment for this lady, but we didn't have the time. So I'm... Um, a little bit in a rush doing this set but then I thought it is really rare opportunity for me to show you how to sculpt uh, because I don't get many requests for sculpted needles even if they match an nicer uh, that's a soft pink fiber gel which we are going to use so I've got only 20 minutes guys to to show you all what I'm going to do it like sculpt those two needles and do the design <laughs> yeah no chance like I'm sure I'm going to be running a little bit late for my next lady i do apologize my next lady so nice and thin layer on the entire needle and then we are going to sculpt the free edge now the hand relax a bit thank you so my model is really helpful and she's going to help me as much as possible and now i'm just um, extending the free edge to the letter M. Okay, so once I've got the product at my free edge, I'm trying to smooth it out a little bit just so I'm not going to have as much filing and tidy up the edges of the nail as well. To be safe, you might even go like a one millimeter below the letter, letter M just, just in case if you if you skirt it might be not enough okay and then cook it so it is going to be only a 30 second skewer because we want to pinch the snails as well again it is very rare i would pinch the nails on the clients 
So I'm so happy, actually, I've got Catherine and we are doing this sculpted set. Nice and thin layer on the entire nail. And then extend the free edge to the letter M. Maybe just a little bit more, just just in case, so I've got something to file. Perfect change. My other hand have been 30 seconds cure, so the product should be cured. And now using a pinching clamps, I'm going to squish it a little bit just to get the nicer slanter look. You have to keep an eye contact with the client and not all nails are suitable for a pinching. You have to be very careful whose nails are you pinching, okay? Because if you pinch weak nails, they will lift on the sides and also you will get a really ugly application. Uh, and then on the other hand, we are going to pinch it as well, change. Okay, so I'm just tapping, making sure it's all intact and I'm going to squeeze this nail. Don't squeeze it too high up because then it is going to be extremely sore for a client. It's more on the extension and just a tiny bit of the free edge. Change, not sore. No. no. Okay. Keep me updated if you would feel it. And then I'm moving a pinching clamp a little bit lower. Change. And I'm moving a pinching clamp again a little bit lower. This one is really nicely pinched already. Change. Very difficult task for your model as well. <laughs> because they need to squeeze an the lamp. So I'm checking if I've got enough product everywhere. Yes, I do. I can peel the form down. And now we can build up the structure on this nail. So to build up the structure in my apex, nice and thin layer, look what I did with her folds. Like I peeled them so much down that I can apply the product everywhere. Neil folds goes down strongly. Okay, the product nice and thin layer through the entire neil. And this is going to give me a perfect thickness around the cuticle area and at the free edge. And then pick up the big scope of the product to build up our structure. They might feel it, the heat spike with such a uh, huge amount of the product. So watch it for the heat spike, okay? So that's my apex build, smoothed it out and removed the bulk from the free edge. By the time I put it to the lamp, the gel will self-level. Check the side view, change. Watch for a heat spike, please. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> and then on this one, we are going to encapsulate the glitter. And I will do it kind of ombre way. So release the form. You don't have to take a form necessarily off. And then nice and thin and layer on the entire nail. Just relax your hand again a little bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A little bit more at the apex, but just a very little. And now we are going to apply the glitter. So I'm going to use some purple and a white glitter on this finger. And best brushes are like the more messy brush you've got, the old brush, like the better it is. So I'm just applying a tiny bit of some sparkles. And then the second color, actually this one is from the Neil Gaga. And it's called Diva 10. Like a very gentle purple. Okay, once I apply my glitter, I take a sponge and I dab it with the sponge. I want the product to really um, don't stick out as much. It is easier to apply clear gel later on. Put everything on the side. Okay, and then... At the same time, just so the things are quicker, I'm going to maybe, or maybe not, I'm not, I'm just going to patient wait. So we have sculpted it with the fiber gel, and for our next part, for the glitter encapsulations, we are going to use the crystal one gel. I'm just waiting a couple seconds longer for my other finger to cure change. Perfect, yeah. And now this one, we need to shape it, so I'm quickly going to show you how to shape it. Remove the inhibition layer. 
and then the coffin shape it needs to be really nice and sharp so one side and other side and do just a little bit work at the time okay one side other side file those three edge start lifting the shape up you can see it I've got a huge bulk of the product in there and by those movements you can see how much the shape has changed it's already look not too bad so I'm still perfecting the shape another place which I'm 100% sure I need to file is around the cuticle area so usually I'm picking up the places which I'm sure I want to file and once I file them then I will move on into the next places okay coffin shape like this move it does really loves this move I mean I love it this move for my coffin shape nails because it's kind of give it, it uh, gives it those sharpness removing the dust as well now let's straighten it up and file the free edge once we shorten the free edge the needle become much thicker so I always have to take um, Take off the thickness from the free edge after shortening the needle. Okay, this already starts looking okay. Ideally, I would love to have an extra couple more minutes to really perfect this shape. I'm just going to find a happy medium so it looks not too bad I'm going to take a buffer and then quickly buff this needle and then it is ready for the next step okay so the needle is buffed I might maybe come back to it but first of all we need to apply the gel and I'm like to use the crystal one for it now we've got full 15 minutes so I'm just going to clean my brush and then take the crystal one gel apply it nice and thin layer on the entire nail nice and thin layer okay so I have kind of almost pressed the glitter down and now I need to build up my structure and apex and this gel is like a water so you have to put the client kneel down always like putting the client kneel down is much better option and quickly build up my apex I've got only a few seconds to do so because this gel is going to run I don't have to massage it I just slap it on and it it works on its own Perfect insight. Okay, so let's for the chromes which we are going to do it. My best advice I could give you is once you have finished filing the nails, take a buffer, and even if you're happy with it, give a couple more scratches of the file of the buffer. This way you will have a perfect um, chrome application. The shinier, it like more shiny and also like more mirror looking if you do that just before I apply the any kind of color or the, or the gel polishes I tend to tidy up my cuticles and that's what I'm going to do it as well so I've got two millimeter cuticle nipper and I'm just going to tidy up this cuticle a little bit There is not much like, I mean, obviously before we have just touched it up with the e-file. 
but just maybe bits and pieces. Okay, I take the other hand. This one is ready as well. So when you're filing the glitter, you need to be very careful to don't uh, overfile the glitter. Um, and if it does happen, there are easy ways to fix it as well. Like you would take it just a tiny bit of the top coat with the glitter and encapsulate it fresh as well. File those free edge. Just relax hand. Perfect, thank you. So if the client hand is relaxed, first of all, you can get a better shape because uh, the nails aren't um, in a funny position, like the fingers. And then secondly, your hand isn't sore as well. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm more concerned about the shape of the nails as well, like sometimes when we go like funny position. But anyway, I better speed up. I, I really didn't want it to record. I don't know what, why I don't it. I have just clipped off her old news and we have done it like an... It should be much longer appointment. Because that was the removal of the extensions and a new set. Okay, I'm almost there with this, with this one. And then take a buffer. Now, can I just compare the lens? Okay, I want this a bit slimmer. So even if I finish, I wanted to check double, uh, double check both of the hands. Perfect, thank you. Now buff this new. I quite like to always check the client view as well, just to make sure they are nice shape. Blend everything around the cuticle area. You don't want any catchy bits and pieces. And then tidy up this cuticle as well. That's okay. Okay, so I just remove a little bit of the cuticle. And there is a bit which annoys me and that's a sticking bit of the glitter and i'm not going to let my client walk like this <laughs> because it would cause the lifting so i've got my cuticle bit and i'm just touching up this place because with the file it would be extremely hard to file it Awesome, and that's it sorted. Okay, so that's those little kind of touch-ups are really, really helpful. Now I'm just going to take a brush, remove any dust and any mess because we need to move on quickly on the next uh, step. And I suggest you, after filing, leave the client hands up and tidy up any mess you've got on the desk. It takes two seconds, but it is going to save you the, the mess, like going into the nails, and I really don't like that. Okay, so on our on this finger, we are going to apply a beautiful chrome. So high shine, no wipe top gel. High shine, no wipe top gel. And make sure that under the light you check for any dust. Because otherwise this is going to extremely show it on the nails. 
and I've got actually lots. Same on this one. So the best tip I can give you as well on this one, wait a couple seconds before you start applying the chrome, like for the dust to come down. Oh, come on. Come on, I'm in a rush. Don't do it to me. That's it. Perfect. Inside. So just in case, because I have borrowed the top coat from other desk, I have cleaned the brush in case if there is maybe some dust on top of the brush. And I'm going to apply this top coat on the rest of the nails. No, that's just me rushing and the dust is flying around here and just landing on the nails. It could be even on my gloves. And I'm so fussy about every single bit of the dust because for chrome it is guys crucial. So really take your take your time. I'm sure it's from my gloves as well. But you can see it flying like it is, everywhere, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> oh, and it's all just because I'm rush. But yeah, so wait a couple seconds, guys. Like, I mean, really, you want to wait a couple seconds before you start applying the chrome. Okay, another. And this one is actually the perfect one. So maybe the dust <laughs> just fall down. <laughs> Change your hands. Okay, so we are going to do some chrome on those nails. And I've got some purple one because Catherine like really purple. Oh my Definitely. gosh. So I'm using nice. the Born Pretty Chromes. And what we are going to do is apply this chrome close to the cuticle. Close to the cuticle and now we are start fading it okay so I'm applying it a little bit a little bit more into the, those kind of like an v-shape um, if possible so just filing it a little bit then take my finger and just remove any excess of those glitter okay do it same not glitter but the chrome do it same okay so we have almost uh, like created a nice ombre and then with the silver chrome i'm going to apply the other part and apply the silver on the other part of the nail now my nails are so long that i always need to put it in the and delete so I'm able to apply it. And now start fading it to the top. Okay, so I'm just applying it to the top, smoothing out the ends, and then I might go maybe with a little bit more purple. little bit more purple so it wouldn't stick into the parts as much where we've got the silver and this like this way we have created really beautiful purple ombre okay i'm just rubbing it in really well for chrome you want to get rid of any bits and pieces like you don't want any bits and pieces in there and then take a brush and remove the excess also what you want to do is take a scratches so take a Scratch one side, other side, one side, other side, and just remove this dust. On this new, we are going to quickly apply the sugar. So I'm just applying the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. And I've got some beautiful sugar which is going to go with it as well. It's called Pixie from the Indigo Effect. And just 
sprinkle one side carefully yeah other side perfect and then I just tap in guys to remove any excess and it looks fantastic I will show you also how to clean this one as well change your hands and cook it so on this hand we again doing very quickly those chrome effect so nice purple one on the top purple one on the top so faded it in so you want to go like those kind of upside down v shape uh, you don't want to apply it in the straight line okay this is pretty important like you don't want it to be in a straight line because if you do it in a straight line then it is not going to look as nice then clean my finger really well and go into the silver one and you start the application with the end with the silver first okay once you done the silver then go to the top so and start blending blend everything really really well and then once you're happy with it we are going to give it a couple scratches and then remove the dust apply high shine no wipe top gel so apply those high shine no wipe top gel sprinkle with the sugar effect Perfect, other side. What a fantastic model I've got, eh? <laughs> and then straight away I'm going to put the top coat on this nail as well. Change. Then we have to put the top coat on those two nails as well and then we can move on for a very quick design. My next lady already arrived. So, so I can take maximum five more minutes for this set and then I need to take care of my next lady. No rush. But um, I'm glad we have recorded because this is another kind of Christmassy set guys for you. And I love this idea like I think the sparkles and the chromes are amazing for this time of the year. So I'm just applying the top coat change and we are going to do a couple of them. Uh, snowy bits and pieces just to finish the set and so it looks nice okay make sure you cap the free edge like for your chrome this is crucial you really need to cap your free edge properly so a couple seconds longer in the meantime I'm just starting to tidy up my desk take all the glitters guys away and everything and uh, wipe off the sparkle parts and then prepare my paint on French gel so I'm going to put a slight drop of it on my mixing palette uh, not my mixing palette but a piece of the back foil and paint on French gel paint on French gel is fantastic for a sugaring And the effect I'm going to use is a snow from the indigo. Perfect change. So this hand is cooked. And what I'm going to do is on this one. I'm just going to paint a tiny, tiny bit of the snow. And I think snow, like snow at the top of the cuticle, looks so fantastic. And then go shaky and wavy, like you don't want to make it too regular. And I'm glad I'm start seeing so many more of the Christmas designs for my clients as well. I think it's just at this time of the year. But then I don't want to make them over the top, like. And this is such a um, beautiful kind of Christmassy idea. 
Oh, my model is shaking more than my hands. <laughs> And again, you don't want to put it too much of it because you don't want to hide away the beautiful um, ombre which we have created with the chromes. So just a little bit and then this one longer. Okay, so we have created those kind of uh, smudgy, uh, snowy effect. And then on this one, the super quick, Super quick snowflake. So, obviously, the more time we've got, the better snowflakes we can draw, but um, just painting the snowflake. And this one. Is going to be a kind of easy one and then with the dotting tool oh no i'm rushing too much now guys with the dotting tool i'm so sorry for that with the dotting tool i'm just going to add a couple of the dots to imitate the snow and then we have to sprinkle it with the snow effect okay so each nail I need to sprinkle it with the snow effect and I do lots of the sugar, like lots of sugar designs for this time of the year. Sprinkle, next one. Anyway, I hope you have really enjoyed this kind of rush it, rush it <laughs> tutorial, unexpected one totally. Uh, but I think it was worth to show you because we have created so many different uh, looks. Change your hands. I'm just going to quickly Don't you pop that in there, yeah? yes please yeah. thank you so much I'm just going to uh, wait about 60 more seconds and then show you guys um, the finished results on the other hand because until I clean it you cannot really see the nice results okay so the snowy looking here and the brush I'm using is a D-liner brush. <coughs> so just tiny, tiny wee bits. I just uh, apply it in a kind of wavy motion. And maybe longer one for a change in here. It almost looks like an icicles. And a wee snowflake. I wish I would have like half an hour longer for this set. Then I could paint it like and show you guys different types of the snowflakes. But I just have to paint like the quickest possible ones. <laughs> and then another snow on the top of this one. So just a couple of waves. Hello, sorry. Can I go to something here? Do you stand up for a Okay, um, and then the longer one, just a little bit longer one in there. Yeah. You don't want to make them all the same because if you make them all the same, it just doesn't look nice. And then a couple of the dots. So dot in there, dot in there, dot in there. So that imitates the snow as well, guys. And then sprinkle it again. So I'm always catching anything which falls down. There we are, sprinkle this one. Thank you. My model is well educated, <laughs> she knows what to do. And the last one, awesome, change your hands. And I, now I need to show you guys very crucial as well for your sugar on the ring finger so what you want to do is file away any excess of the glitter on the sides you don't want it to be catchy for your model then take a brush 
and remove the excess of this glitter, okay? And move the remove the excess of this glitter, remove the excess. And this way you can see how beautiful this set is. And I'm going to take an amazing thumbnail picture for them. Then clean my model hands and apply the cuticle oil. So I hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial. Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, glittery hugs and bye for now.